What's up guys, today we're talking about proper running foot strike, how do you land on that midfoot, that forefoot, that heel, we'll talk about what that is, as well as three steps to improve it. So, we're down here low on the ground because I wanna show you the different styles of foot strike that we tend to see and identify what those are and then talk about you know, some of the pluses and minuses of, both of, the, of all of them and then how we can generally improve our foot strike for what we're trying to do. And reality, what usually what we have are these three options. And these are the things you hear all the time. If this is the ground and this is my, my foot, we have uh, a heel style strike where literally what's gonna happen is that this heel is gonna hit the ground first and then the rest of the foot's gonna hit there. We have something called a midfoot strike where generally, more or less the whole foot hits at the same time. Maybe this part of the foot hits first and then the heel just kisses and unloads. And then you have more of a four foot style strike where I'm running much more up in that you know, front half of my foot, front third of my foot, and maybe my heels don't hit the ground at all, right? So we have that heel, that midfoot, and that forefoot. And it looks something like this. You're just seeing my feet right now where I've got the heel, boom, this way. I've got that midfoot, something like this, and then that forefoot where all of a sudden I'm much more on this front part. Now, sometimes we hear that heel striking is blanket bad. And what I'd like to say is that depending on the type and style of running we're doing, we may employ all of these types of foot strikes. And what's bad is that when we're using the wrong foot strike for the wrong situation or for too long a period of a time. The most common time we see heel striking being used is for longer, slower running. And a lot of times that heel strike is actually indicative of other problems. It's indicative of a cadence problem, which we'll talk about. It's indicative of a problem with tight, stiff hips, lack of core engagement, lack of arm swing. And so my foot's on the ground for a long time and then all of a sudden my foot swings way out in front because maybe my hips are tight. And then what's happening is that my foot is actually taking a whole lot of uh, pounding and shock from my running. So there are some negative aspects with heel striking, but if I'm going down a steep hill and I need to put on the brakes for a quick second before I take a sharp left turn, guess what? I might be heel striking a little bit there just to put on the brakes. So you kind of get what I'm saying. Same thing with forefoot striking. Forefoot is something that's gets me more forward, it's more powerful, I'm a lot more springy, but there comes a cost with that. So if I wanna accelerate, I'm hitting that finish line sprint, I'm trying to goose it up a hill, some other gear like that, hey, I wanna be up there. But if I think I'm gonna survive on my toes for a marathon, once again, maybe that's not the best gear. So for most of us, when we're looking at that distance style running, we're probably going to be trying to cut out the extreme forefoot and the extreme heel strike and get somewhere closer to the middle. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Now here's the most important thing to realize with your foot strike. Your foot strike is the result of all these other factors and things further up the kinetic chain. I've, I remember reading this one time and it really clicked with me that your foot is at the end of this really long kinetic whip. And that whip is cracked from up here. It starts with your hips and your shoulders. So when we're talking about running and we're talking about effectively changing our foot strike and improving our running form, we have to start with our posture in the beginning. And that's the hardest thing because truth be told, if you're watching this video, what do you look like? Are you here? Are you down here? Because guess what, if you're down here a little bit, this is what you're telling your body is okay all the time, and this is where you might end up being when you run. So that's an important little aside, but it's a really important connection. Now, I wanna be nice and tall. What do we think about with our running? Well, one of the things I wanna think about is just first, before I start, connecting that line from my ears, shoulders, hips, knees to my ankles. And then as I start to run, I can put my hands on my hips and I can just think about slowly sort of shifting those hips forward a few times. And then as I take off from my run, I can think about leading forward with these hips. I've done this more in depth in other videos, but there's a combination basically between falling forward and being upright, and that's really this hip position. And it's gonna be a combination of both, that when this leg is extended back behind me, my hips are forward, my chest is up, so you can see that there's this moment of little extension. But notice that it's not overextension through the low back, and then I'm also not running here, right? So there's that sweet spot. Why do I care about posture in my hip position? Well, this, when I engage my hips and my glutes, 
that extends my hips, opens them up so that I have hip extension and when I run and I go fast with my running, all of a sudden my stride opens up out the back. If my hips are really tight, which is very common because, hey, we live in this world, we sit here all day, what happens is that I don't have that hip extension anymore and then when I try to run faster, which involves me opening up my stride, my foot has nowhere to go but way out in front. So that's why we tend to see that heel strike when we accelerate, a combination of lack of hip position and then also lack of hip mobility, my hips are tight. That's number one. Now number two, which is also really important, is to think about your shoulders and your arm swings. This is connected with our posture, but what happens is that when we get tired, we don't breathe very well, our shoulders creep up here and our arms get really stiff. And you see those runners who barely swing their arms, maybe their wrist is moving a lot just because their arms aren't swinging as well. And then what happens is that if my arms aren't moving as well, my legs can't move well. We move contralaterally. For every leg swing, there's an arm swing that goes back and forth. And I need that connection. It's really, really important. So for me to get my legs going and landing more underneath me, I actually need to be very, very good at swinging my arms. Every once in a while, it's good to run with a metronome, something that audibly beeps at you, and you can actually think about your elbow drive at your back. So we've got hip position, we've got elbow position, and finally we've got cadence, which I just alluded to. And that cadence is actually gonna be a little bit of an active pull with the hips. What that's gonna do is help recycle this movement a little bit faster, because what happens is we get a little lazy and we get tired, just like we get a little lazy when we're sitting at work and if we're there all of a sudden my posture goes away my shoulders stiffen up and then my feet tend to shuffle and drag across the ground and if you're someone who's done that marathon shuffling in the past you know what I'm talking about so what we need to actively think about is picking those feet up a little bit faster and I guarantee you that if your hips are in a better position, your arm swing is better in line, you're more actively engaging and picking those feet up, your feet are gonna start to land a little bit more natural and a little bit more relaxed underneath your body, which is exactly where we want to be. Whether that ends up being just still a slight heel strike, that's okay, a midfoot or even a slight forefoot, all of those things are okay. We don't want to see any drastic change from one thing to another. But if I can start to bring everything in towards the middle, that's going to help me out a lot in my longer running. That's it guys, I hope you liked this video on proper foot strike. If you did, go ahead and let me know, hit that like button down below. Do you have any comments or questions on things we talked about today or any future video requests, hit us up in the comments. Definitely make sure you subscribe to our channel, The Run Experience. We got so much more content that we're coming out with all the time on running technique, on strength training, on injury prevention, on how to train for that next race. Definitely hit that subscribe button there. And finally, you've made it this far. If you want a free gift, two weeks of free run strength and mobility training on how to be a better, stronger, faster runner, well, all you need to do is hit this link in this video. If you happen to be on your mobile device, don't worry, fear not. There is a link down in the description below. Both links are gonna take you to this page. Once you're at this page, all you need to do is enter your name and your email address and then we'll send you our free two weeks training. Anyway guys, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.